Alright, now I should do a before and after video. I already cut this board <coughs> to fit. Um, basically what I'm doing is I'm working on reflooring this container that David Ray was using in rent. <coughs> and after it warms up, I'm going to work on the ceiling and the roof. But uh, this new stuff I got is practically invincible. <laughs> Flat out best. And it is pretty amazing stuff. Uh, you, if you watch the previous videos, I refloored the box truck and I'm still working on, but I refloored the uh, cat house as well. So, I basically got to get all this crap <laughs> out. It doesn't have to be perfect, because like I said, I'm just covering it up. I'm just going to rake all this stuff out and sweep it. Uh, and then I've got a uh, battery-powered leaf vac. I'll vac the rest, and then I'll uh, put a board down, and then I'll go to the next section and just work my way that way. <laughs> my brother's coming down to look at a couple properties today, so I may not get this all done today, but my goal is to get it at least halfway done. i got to put down five boards, basically. So, <clears throat> that's what I'm working on. And Libby wants attention, so she's being annoying and in the way. But yeah, that's what I'm working on today. Yesterday, I took Cindy to the hospital, and then afterwards, uh, she helped me with uh, feeding, uh, refilling the cat food containers down in the back, <clears throat> and helping me prep a lick tub for probably garlic and onions, <clears throat> um, which I'll be putting outside here shortly. <clears throat> I put the garlics in some moist dirt for now to keep them alive, but I will repot them once I get these new lick tubs uh, ready for gardening. And I'm basically going to put them behind the uh, blackberries where I'm planning to put the next greenhouse, which I'm applying for a grant with the government to get one. And uh, so that's uh, why I'm focusing on producing food because that's one of the contingencies. I have to produce food. <clears throat> I mean, I've been trying to produce food for seven years, but the worthless eaters I had on the land basically held me back <laughs> and wasn't helping out, wasn't producing. And so I basically just had to get rid of them. And now I'm doing everything by myself for the most part with a little bit of help from Cindy and my mom. <clears throat> but uh, mostly it's pretty much on me. So I've almost got the greenhouse uh, ready for... Um, Sorry, my, my uh, troll cam just went off, but it's probably telling me about myself. But anyways, um, I got distracted. So I almost got the greenhouse ready for my tomatoes, and uh, <clears throat> so I'm working on... I got the south side ready, uh, pretty much. Now I'm working on the north side so I can move the tables over there. <laughs> or I'll probably just move them back outside <clears throat> and then uh, start working on my tomato cages uh, on the south side of the greenhouse. So that's what I'm going to be doing uh, next. Next, It's not tomato weather yet, but I will be working on tomatoes here soon. <laughs> A classic example of what happens when you help out ungrateful people, whether it's friends or family. <clears throat> I have a friend and associate who is more successful than I am, comes from a more successful family than I do, <clears throat> and uh, he's a lot like me except better. <clears throat> and he, uh, his parents basically live in like a mansion, and you know, he's self sufficient, independent, and whatever. So, but his sister ended up falling on hard times, and so his parents ended up letting her move back in. With them, she moved all of her stuff, some overseas storage containers and whatnot, to their house, <clears throat> and basically took over their whole house. Um, her dogs pooped all over the house. This is a mansion, mind you, <clears throat> not like maybe Beverly Hills type mansion, but it's a freaking huge ass freaking house. His parents or their parents were basically restricted to their own bedroom because their sis his sister, their daughter, took over the whole house with her dogs and basically trashed the whole house and wouldn't let the figure to do anything. And recently, they too had to basically hire an attorney and get her evicted from their property. <clears throat> You know, just like I had to do with Judas. And, um, you know, I, I gave him 90-day notice, but they only gave her 15-day notice. He's accusing me of giving him a 15-day notice, but I actually gave him 15 days. <laughs> when the 15 days was up, I was like, you know, when the 15 days was there, I basically just um, raised the level of pressure. I gradually kept raising the level of pressure <clears throat> every 15 days, starting at the 90-day mark, and I just kept elevating the pressure to get him out of here. <clears throat> but anyways, you know, <clears throat> this is basically how much respect he had for me and my property. <clears throat> And he just left everything a mess. You've already seen. If not, you can go back and look at previous videos of trash that he left all over the land, how trashy the greenhouse was. <clears throat> you know, <laughs> he lived in filth and he left the filth behind for me to clean up. <clears throat> so be careful how much you help people. And like Dave Ramsey always says, <clears throat> never give more than you can afford to lose. 
And David Ray always talks about burnt offerings. And of course, he's, take, he's telling the burnt offering story from a moocher's perspective. <clears throat> but basically, he's saying, you know, when you give somebody something, it needs to be a burnt offering. You need to not expect anything in return. And that's a half truth. <clears throat> Again, like Dave Ramsey says, never give anything that you cannot afford to lose. <clears throat> so it may not be a burnt offering per se. It may not be given as a burnt offering. <clears throat> but in your mind, consider that it may end up being a burnt offering whether you like it or not <clears throat> because you may never see it again. <clears throat> so never give anything that you cannot afford to lose. <clears throat> I have to learn that the hard way still, but I'm learning it. You know, Don't let people use something that you can't afford to lose. Don't let people borrow something that you can't afford to lose. Don't give people money that you can't afford to lose. <clears throat> you know, uh, this container cost me 2,500 bucks, I think. And now it's going to cost me another thousand or more to fix it up after he basically disrespected it. So <clears throat> yeah. And here I let him use it for free. I never charged him a dime. And, uh, <clears throat> this is, this is how he left it for me. Trash. You know, now it's going to cost me money. So <clears throat> again, just be careful what you give and how much you give to people that may or may not appreciate it or respect it or respect you, <clears throat> you know, um, uh, when the Bible says, take care of the widows and the orphans, it's talking about more or less giving them a hand up, not a hand out. <clears throat> you know, it's like, I help Cindy because she's widowed and she really can't do a whole lot for herself, but she does try to repay me. You know, she at least makes an effort. She probably can't afford or doesn't have the wherewithal to be able to repay me as much as I'm helping her, but <clears throat> she at least is trying. <clears throat> and that is how, you know, you know, whether or not, um, somebody actually is genuine or not. You know, she's offering to help me out on the farm all the time, but I don't have a lot of stuff that she can do. And she can probably help me with this. <clears throat> but right now she's on medication uh, for something that I took her to the doctor for that may prevent her from helping me today. So that's the only reason why she's not helping me today. <clears throat> and it's freaking cold outside. She can't handle the extreme cold or the extreme heat. But she at least offers, she at least tries. She wants to give back. <clears throat> and I let her, you know, when she can, when there's an opportunity for her to do so. <clears throat> Unfortunately for me, it seems like I'm more productive when I work alone rather than when I have somebody with me. But there are some things that I need help with, and that's whenever I call on people to help me with it. <clears throat> you know, like these boards are really freaking heavy. I mean, I can handle them, but <clears throat> um, like hanging siding, you know, sometimes it takes two or three people, depending on what it is, to hang siding. So I call on uh, someone to help me with that. <clears throat> you know, if it's someone like my brother who I don't have to hold their hand in order to do something, then I would have them help me because all I have to do is say, I need this done, and they will go do it, and it'll be done. I don't have to babysit them, I don't have to hold their hand. And my trail cam is saying I got a vehicle detected again. So I'm gonna have to check that out. Oh, it's probably the wind blowing my mom's camper again. <clears throat> But anyways, I'm going to go check that out, and I'm going to go get my uh, vacuum and vacuum this. It doesn't have to be perfect, but uh, I want it to be clean enough to put the board down <clears throat> and not have any problems. But uh, this is probably fine. And this back part's not as root as the front part. This front part's the worst. <clears throat> but yeah, I kept telling him, I said, you know, you need to get your stuff out of that container so that I can get it up out of the mud and put it on gravel so it won't get root. I was worried about the floor rotting out. And now you see the floor rotted out. Not completely, but on especially around the edges. And up front, and then of course the ceiling. I got up here a year or two ago and patched the ceiling, and because uh, he never would. <clears throat> and uh, because of all the moisture inside here, all of his stuff rotted, <clears throat> as well as the floor. I mean, because that was all the boxes of his stuff. Not all the boxes, but some of the boxes of his stuff. His stuff was just rotten. <clears throat> uh, another friend was going to let him put the stuff in his overseas storage container. Here's a mouse nest <clears throat> that was inside the container. But anyways, a friend was going to let him use his container to store all of his stuff, but he says you can't put anything moldy in there. Well, pretty much everything in here was moldy. <clears throat> And he basically said, well, it's going to take me a year to go through all my stuff in order to make sure that I don't have anything moldy to put in here. I was like, fuck that. I ain't got a year. You got to be out of here in 90 days. <clears throat> so I just had to start applying more pressure because he was dragging his ass. And uh, plus he was stealing some of my things as well. So <clears throat> I basically had to put more pressure on him and give him uh, less time because he wanted to take a year. I had to give him less time and keep applying more pressure to get him out of here quicker so he wouldn't steal more stuff and so I can have my, my stuff back, you know, my greenhouse, my container, whatnot. <clears throat> He had his stuff everywhere. You know, we took him, we it took a year for us to get him to get his stuff out of my mom's uh, green shed. That's supposed to be used for tools. He had his own personal crap in there. We kept bugging him for a whole year to get his stuff out. Eventually I had to just take it out and take it to the greenhouse <clears throat> and lock him out of the green shed. <laughs> Otherwise he just took it back there, which he did the first time I did that. And so I was like, all right, fine. I'm gonna change the locks. I'm gonna move all this stuff into the greenhouse. Boom. Problem solved. <clears throat> so yeah, it took forever just to get him to get his stuff out of there. Everything that I owned, he tried to move his stuff into my space. He had his stuff everywhere. <clears throat> And I don't know if his agenda was, well, if I have my stuff with your stuff, then I can claim some of your stuff as my stuff when I leave or, or what, but basically that's what he did, you know? So be careful letting people invade your space and putting their stuff with your stuff, because then they may try to lay claim on some of your things as well. So be leery of that. Anyways, I'm going to get back to work, trying to be productive, but I also kind of want to warn people, not that anybody really watches my videos, only my brother, and maybe one other, but, um, yeah, just be careful how much you help people. I tend to overhelp people, and it usually, nine times out of ten, is at my own demise. <clears throat> so, yeah. I'll meet my brother in 30 minutes, but I was uh, skeptical about this Hertz vacuum 
uh, it's a leaf vacuum. I bought it to clean out, to be able to vacuum my camper because I'm off grid here, right? I don't got electricity. So everything's gotta be battery powered or solar powered. And I just use the solar panels to charge everything. But uh, it did a really good job in this back corner here. Like I said, I'm doing four foot sections at a time, probably a little bit more than four foot sections at a time. These are four by eights. <clears throat> so now I'll bring that uh, sheet that I just cut. I got electricity at Kaplinger, my Kaplinger property. <clears throat> so now I'll lay it down in here and then I'll go meet my brother and then I'll do the uh, <laughs> next layer after, after, after. So like I said, it's not perfect. It's a lot better than it was. And this floor is amazing stuff. It will probably last the rest of my life. So as long as I keep this stuff out of the mud, it's on gravel now. The other ones are on gravel and even they still have moisture in them. <clears throat> so it's like, you can only imagine how much moisture was in this not being on the gravel. It was horrible. <clears throat> and I got mine up out of, the, out of the mud, like within the first couple few years, because I saw what it was doing. My first container is that blue one. <clears throat> and you know, I kept bugging him. I got boat storage. I kept bugging him to get his stuff out and clean it out so I could get it up on gravel. I had this spot here. I had another spot over there that had gravel if we could have moved it to, <clears throat> but I just couldn't get him to do anything. So <clears throat> once I got rid of him, he cleaned it out. So now I'm fixing it up. So yeah, Sophie was supposed to come down this weekend and help, but uh, she copped out on me. So again, I'm doing everything by myself as usual. But anyways, yeah, just be careful who you help, how much you help them, and make sure they appreciate what you're doing for them. And make sure that you can afford to lose whatever it is you're giving them, because you may regret it later. And if you can afford to lose it, then you won't regret it. Mostly because I measured from here to there, but not this back corner where it's a lot tighter. So, oh, I see there's this little lip here, and I didn't account for that. So I may have to get my saw saw or my jigsaw and uh, chisel that little piece out <clears throat> or get my hammer and force it in, one of the three. But uh, yeah, I got to get it to go that way a little bit as well as down. But I got to go meet my brother. Yeah, you see daylight in here. <clears throat> so I got to fix that as soon as it warms up. Once I, when I drop this down, these things are heavy. When I drop this down, the vibration made more rust fall off the ceiling. Hopefully it's not too far gone where I have to replace the whole ceiling. You can see right here where I patched it before. But, you know, that doesn't help when you have all this moisture inside, rotting it from the inside. But anyway, yeah, it's crazy. <clears throat> so, I'll probably end up just getting a board and a hammer and pounding it in. Because <clears throat> it's only, you know, that one spot. Then the rest should be good. I got my measurements down. I'll measure again to make sure. But I'll have to remember that when I get to the other end. Yeah, because it's got that lip here too. <clears throat> and then, I guess in the gaps, I can fill them in with silicone or something. Or not even worry about it. <clears throat> You know, but yeah, that vacuum worked really good. But that was a bitch. I still cut it too short. I mean, too long, in a sense. I had a hammer down in there, and then I turned a little bit off this end, thinking maybe, you know, with the uh, saw saw. And I thought, all right, cool, got it. Then I stepped off of it, and it blows up in the middle. I'm like, oh, dang it. So I'm about to pull it up and trim it a little bit more, and then put it back down. But I need to be trimmed on both ends. So I'm using these old tires of mine for saw horses. Whew. I think my brother might be here. Now there's probably so much. We might look at that property, and it's a pretty cool property. Shoot, if I didn't have this one, I'd be interested in that one. It's basically a lot similar to this one, uh, except maybe a little bit better. So, uh, well, better in some ways, and worse in some ways. So I'd say it's about equivalent to this one. But uh, it already has a house, water, and septic on it. Not a very big house, but it's decent size. So uh, I hope he gets it. Then he'll be two and a half miles away from me. And then my dad will be two and a half miles away from me too, probably. So, or we could probably go my dad at Kaplinger, which will still be two and a half miles away. But either way, yeah. All right, I'm going to fix this. And then get the next board ready. Ah, I had to vacuum again because every time I use the hammer, rust, more rust keeps falling off the ceiling. So, yeah, so I had to trim it, not just there, but right here too is rubbing. So this first one and second one are the tightest. After that, it gets loose, looser. So these first two, when you put down flooring in these containers, make sure you compensate. So I measured from here to there, or maybe on the other side, 92 and a half. And then I cut it on this side of the line to just give me a little bit more play. <laughs> And it was still too tight because of back here. But as you can see up here, I could have went the full 92 and a half and been okay. So I'm just a blade or two blades off. But nonetheless, no big deal. It don't have to be perfect. It just has to work. So I got it working. Now, 92 and a half. I'll cut three more or four more of these 92 and a half. I'll measure again though, to be sure. And then uh, start cutting and uh, come back and get this thing finished. I'll have to uh, trim some off. I'll have to use the uh, jigsaw to trim some at the end, like I did here. But uh, at least now I know what I'm working with. But 92 and a half inches is what you need for inside an overseas storage container. Then I got an extra one for the cat house. I still haven't finished the cat house. Uh, I'll probably still need to buy one more for the cat house, but <clears throat> I'll get to that eventually. So I've got it set up now where I can at least get the auger feeder in there when I can afford to buy it. That's a whole $600. But I plan on doing it. And then, uh, <clears throat> yeah, 
I may actually need to get two of them, one for Kaplinger and one for here. But I'll worry about Kaplinger later, later. So I got a splinter I got to take care of. There it is right there. I figured before I get started on the next one, I might as well go ahead and knock all the rust off the ceiling. And I already knocked a bunch of it off. And I still got a little bit more to knock off. But I thought maybe you guys might want to see it. I don't know if you can see it very well. There's still a little bit up there. Now all the rust, most of the rust is on the floor, so I'm gonna worry about it later. Should have thought about that earlier, but I didn't. I kind of did, but I kind of didn't. So you can see I got still some rust over there that fell all around after I moved all the stuff over here in the corner. So I'll clean that up. But I'll scrape it all out before I bring the wood back in. <coughs> and uh, oh. that's some heavy wood there too, by the way. This crap is freaking heavy. That's like $75 of board right there too. That's expensive board. But it is good quality stuff. And indoors, it'll last forever. Probably the rest of my life. So yeah, I'll take a breather. And uh, I'm kind of limping now. I'm carrying them heavy boards. I'm not used to working like this. I'm a truck driver. But uh, I'm going to relax a little bit. Go over to Kaplinger. Cut these boards. And if I got time, if I got time, I'll cut the last one for the cut house as well. And then Cindy's going to cook me dinner. I may not be terribly hungry because I just ate lunch. But... Uh, but I'll go over there this evening and relax a little bit and have dinner with her. So see, that's how she makes up for, you know, doing the things that I do for her. <clears throat> she cooks me dinner. She tries to help out here on the land. She would cook me dinner more often than she does. I just don't let her because I'm so busy. Um, but I should let her cook for me more often. <clears throat> I usually work, you know, till 9 o'clock at night. And then it's like bedtime, so I just go to bed. Um, if I go over there, I gotta go over there around 6 or 7. <clears throat> and then the rest of my day is done. And that's like three hours of work that I could be getting done here. So... <clears throat> Yeah, I'll show you the blackberries real quick again. We flagged the blackberries yesterday. <clears throat> you can see the orange flags I bought. And uh, most of those are sprouts that are coming up from the ones David Ray planted. So, um, yeah. <clears throat> see all them sprouts? And some of them are the new ones that I planted as well. But yeah, all these out here are either the ones, are sprouts from the ones David planted, or, um, or a couple of them that he left behind. Like that's a sprout, that's a sprout. Uh, I think that one there was one he left behind, and then, it, then, it's, then two more sprouted. <clears throat> so, and I don't know if this, this one's too far out. I don't know if it's a sprout or something else. But I flagged it just in case. But he didn't plant this far out, I don't think. Maybe he did. But, yeah, it's funny, he made a big stink. Well, first he didn't want them because he thought they were rejects. So Cindy and I liked them. We came over and cleaned up the blackberry patch and we started trying to cultivate it. <coughs> then Bill didn't want his that were just like these. So I went over and did a trade for blackberries from him <coughs> for some barrels. These uh, 55 gallon barrels. Made a trade for those. <coughs> came over, planted them in this patch. Then David threw a fit. Oh, how do I know your blackberries from mine now? <coughs> I was like, you said you didn't want them. You said they were trash. <clears throat> you know, so he threw a big fit about it. And then when he left, he left them behind. He didn't take them with him. Because he didn't want them. <clears throat> so, there you go. Bruce in the pudding. Yeah, this is crazy right here. So, he had probably termites in here eating up not just my not just my floor, but his stuff. <clears throat> this is crazy. A yin yang necklace. I'll hold on to that. But here's a hole in the floor, looks like, where the mice got in. So that, that explains why there was a mouse nest in here. That might not be the only one. It's just the only one I found so far. Pretty much, I think that's it. But there's still stuff stuck to the floor. But yeah, like I said, 
be careful who you let use and abuse or use your stuff because they may abuse your stuff. You may not ever see it again too. I mean, people who uh, loan stuff out and never see it again. And uh, I mean, David would leave my stuff laying out in the field and I find it, you know, a couple years later. Sometimes it's rent, sometimes it's not. Like these trellises. <coughs> and they were basically like uh, buried underneath all the bees and stuff. I didn't pull them out. I didn't even know they were there. <coughs> I don't remember where they came from, but they were basically buried underneath the weeds. Uh, in a sense, it's a good thing because it, it preserved them. You know, the sunlight didn't rot them because the sun couldn't even get to them. But uh, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. This corner too, there's just old jars and just nasty stuff. Whatever. But anyhow, I thought, well, maybe I should do an actual video. I don't know how I'm going to place my phone up here.
I guess I timed out. I don't know where I was when I was timed out recording, but there's another hole, a big freaking hole on the floor. Sucks. So I'll run it out. Now, I did a video when the, uh, when the, uh, flatbed <coughs> tow truck driver came and picked everything up. It was caked mud underneath there. But yeah, this is why you don't want to leave a container sitting in the mud. This is exactly why I kept bugging David Ray to clean it out so we can get it out of the mud. I was trying to prevent this from happening. So, yeah. I won't let people be using my crap no more. And this is exactly why. So, <clears throat> people like David Ray, ruin it for the rest of you. Because, yeah, you know, this cost me time and money <clears throat> to uh, clean up after his mess. And I never charged him to use this thing. And I should have. <clears throat> oh, yeah. But anyways, I guess I shouldn't have. Because if you stop that, I'm going to video some more. <clears throat> so I just vacuum this, and I'll drop it down the next one.
anyway, the Lord says it'll just never happen. Oh, probably not, because I guess who's over here. But oh well. It'll be alright. So, now, I'll go get my blower. I'll blow out this, because I don't think I can vacuum it. And then I'll be back. But look at that, that looks so much better. That looks so much better, look at that. Will you look at that? Will you look at it? Just look at it. Vivi, will you look at that? Look at it. Look at it. We look at it. Look, yeah, yeah. Just look at it. <laughs> she doesn't have a clue what I'm talking about. All right, we'll be back. <clears throat> My battery's at forty percent, so I'm gonna do this last part. I'm gonna prep this last part and then put the phone on the charger while I cut the last piece because I'm gonna have to go cut this last piece. Right. I ended up getting this for free, but I had to go buy the charger for it. I like these the best, rigid, so far, but... I haven't tried any of the other uh, battery-powered power tools besides Black & Decker. Oh, and uh, what's that shitty one called? Uh, HyperTuff. Never buy HyperTuff. They suck. Yeah. Oh. You blow this door off real quick. Get the single steel. Got one last blue. Sliding on that, I never took him in. Or at least not like I did anyways. Rotten shit everywhere. Alright, shut this door. Get my measurements. Sure. Starting to get cold again. He got nice there for a little bit. push this that way. I'll take these screws back up and it'll help push this side in maybe hopefully. I'll leave a screw on this side and take these three up and in that way everything will you know pivot. That way. This one here's the worst. So and I think I got a yeah I got a tap screw right here. Out. Let me do that real quick. Before I forget there we go. Before you know it, this will be like brand new. Like right throw. Ah. All right, cool beans. I love it when a plan jumps together. <coughs> so I probably won't get this finished till tomorrow. <coughs> but that's all the stuff swept out. We'll I'm not counting all the big boxes and the big stuff that I took out, or the stuff that blew away in the wind. It's all biodegradable, most of it. Uh, so I'm not that worried. <coughs> oh, and then there's a whole bunch of this here bag. I'm gonna take it all to the greenhouse <coughs> since it's probably good compost material. So I got an hour left. I'm gonna stick this in the box again. You can pretty much see what I'm doing. Now I cut one side a little shorter by accident. So I'm gonna go ahead 
Put the shorter side over here. Just because it may not want to shift that way. Now this container is mostly going to be for heavy equipment, big tools, and whatnot. <clears throat> and then that one's going to be for small tools and whatnot. <clears throat> if this isn't bad, I need to mix this up. Looks like it might be fermenting. It might already be too far gone. I may have to just put it in my uh, liquid compost. But anyways, <clears throat> I was gonna make an elixir out of that. But yeah, it got too warm and it started fermenting. So now, <clears throat> I'll uh, just uh, take this rabbit poop to the greenhouse and I'll finish this tomorrow. Tomorrow, look at that termites and stuff. <clears throat> Insane. I would never treat somebody's property this way. I don't think I ever have, and I don't think I ever will. <clears throat> All right, until next time. The next day. All right, it's day two. <clears throat> I got everything charged and ready to go. Just gonna stick my phone up in here again. So you can see what's going on. Nick, we're gonna see everything. I'm not keeping all this stuff in here. This is gonna be for big tools and stuff. Long term. Yeah, I'm spinning. I thought I was up to a little bit. No, you're right there.
Beautiful, beautiful. Snug like a bug in a rug. Well, I like it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now I'm not gonna worry about this anymore. <coughs> and like I said, this will last a lifetime. <coughs> uh, if I have any concerns, I can always put down another layer when the price of these go down. They went down a little bit, but not enough. So, yeah. I probably cut it a little bit too much over here, but that's okay. That's all right. I'll fill it in with uh, silicone or something in the future, maybe. But uh, yeah, cool beans. Now all I gotta do is fix the roof and the ceiling. <coughs> I've already patched it a couple few times. I thought there was another hole somewhere. Oh, chip over the tire. Peacock feathers that David Ray had in here. It's ridiculous. <laughs> so it's a lot, lot better than it was. I should send him a bill. But he's a bum. He'll never have the money. But that's on purpose because he's a bum. He's a worthless bum. <sighs> like he says, be careful who you loan your stuff to. <laughs> be careful who you help and how much you help them. You may end up regretting it. All right. Now that this is done, I'm going to be moving on to the cat house. These two uh, barrels have diatomaceous earth in them. I got two 40-pound bags of food-grade diatomaceous earth. <clears throat> uh, I pretty much have everything that I need for this year, but I'm prepping for next year. Uh, this one's going to be my herbal blend. For the animals, uh, their their herbal supplement that I'll add to their feed, and this one will be my herbal blend uh, for my plants, <laughs> and this will be like my all natural seven dust. I call it thirteen dust because there's thirteen ingredients, but basically it'll be like seven dust, but it'll be all natural. So <clears throat> got those in the works. Uh, I'll get working on them throughout the year. I need to order all the herbs. I got some of them, but I got to order. I got to double check all my herbs, make sure I got what I need, or make sure I get what I need. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, and then uh, I'll be good to go. So there you go. All right, on to the cat house. And then I'll come and scoop this up later and take it to the greenhouse. I already took the bag, the leaf blower bag, to the greenhouse. 
later I'll scoop all this up and take it to the greenhouse as well. It's mostly paper and rust, but uh, I'll pick out any other crap that doesn't need to be in here. But I pretty much already picked out most of the crap that don't need to be in here. There's a couple old flags. Uh, but other than that, most of it's just paper and rust. So it'll be fine in the greenhouse. <laughs> it'll be fine here, to be honest. But uh, I'm afraid there might be some nails in it, and I definitely don't want that in my tires. So if I put it underneath the dirt in the greenhouse, the nails will rot down and go back to the earth. So not that I'll be driving up against this here. In fact, I'll probably have more gravel in here covering this up soon. But uh, I just don't want to take any chances of getting nails in my tires. Well, we don't want nails in our feet either. But <clears throat> um, like I said, if I put it underneath the dirt in the greenhouse, then... It'll be fine because I still got to take some more dirt in here. So I'll put this underneath that dirt.